Hey guys, Tate here. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down pinch of Mayurasana or the forearm balance. Now with the forearm balance, the biggest thing, the biggest obstacle that people have to overcome is either tightness through the shoulders or they don't understand the external rotation in the shoulders or their external rotators don't have the strength to keep the elbows wrapping in. I'll kind of demo that here real quick. So what happens, a lot of times again, anytime you come down into the forearm balance, boom, I wanna make sure my elbow is right underneath my shoulder. It's not too far out, it's not too far in, it's right underneath. Again, left elbow underneath the left shoulder, palms facing down, and with the palms facing down, what happens when I start to lift, if I come into a dolphin pose, is if I'm not wrapping my elbows towards each other, engaging the outsides of my shoulders, my elbows wanna splay out. And when the elbows splay out, they go out wide, they go wider than shoulder width. It makes it really difficult to engage the lats and the serratus on the side body, the big muscles that help support you when you're upside down in your forearm balance. It also doesn't allow you for the joints to stack, which then is where you also find the lightness in this. So what I want you to do here, to kind of find that external rotation in the shoulders, to get that, to feel what it feels like what the shoulders should be when we're, when we're activated. So come down again, set your forearms down. Again, make sure elbows underneath the shoulders, elbow underneath the shoulders. Some teachers will cue, you know, grab triceps with your, for, with your forearms down. The, they say this is where your elbows are. For most people that'll work, um, but for some people with broader shoulders or more narrow shoulders, that you might need to tweak it a little bit. So for me, what I like to just do, elbow down, take a peek, shoulder over elbow, shoulder over elbow. And then I'm gonna turn my palms facing up. My thumbs are gonna start wrapping down, and I'm gonna hover my hands an inch or two off the mat. And then with my, my hands hovering an inch or two off the mat, I'm just gonna separate my thumbs away from each other. And you can kind of see that with them externally rotated, it starts to activate a little bit more into the outsides of the shoulders. So the more I stretch the thumbs away, the more my shoulders are activated. So when I, when I hold this, I'm building strength in the rotator cuff, but more importantly, I'm also bringing awareness to how that engagement feels. So when my hands are turning down and they're pressing down, I can wrap the elbows in and still feel that same sensation in the outsides of the shoulders. So the way we're gonna work it, first I'll break down the forearm balance hands with the palms facing down and then I'll kind of show a variation that will help you can find that stability in the shoulders and allow you to work the balance upside down. So again, we set this up. Elbow underneath shoulder, elbow underneath shoulder, hands pressed down. It's okay if the hands come in slightly, but when the hands come in, the elbows then wanna come out. So it's gonna take a little bit more effort to wrap the elbows in. So I like to keep the hands straight out. If I'm working a little bit deeper of a back bend in my forearm balance, I may bring my palms together and press the knife side down. But if I do this, it, I lose a little bit of the stability. So you wanna make sure you're comfortable upside down first. So I'm gonna press into the hands. I walk the feet in as far as they'll go. I wanna see if I can get my feet closer to my elbows, my hips are already gonna be over my shoulders or close to it. So that way it doesn't take as big of a hop or as much core or strength to get the, the legs and hips up, they're already stacked. So that's why having open hamstrings in any inversion help when you're going upside down because it helps you get the hips closer to being stacked over the shoulders. So I walk the feet in. Right, I walk the feet in. I, I'm not collapsing down, I'm pressing out. My elbows wrap towards each other, my forearms track towards each other and I press into the hands. I then pick up my right foot and then here, I might just stay here, just continuing to press here and building strength, wrapping elbows in to get the external rotators fired up. Now, what you see a lot of times is people will take this lifted leg and just try to kick it as hard as they can. Well, what I like to think about instead of, you're gonna have to use a little bit of momentum until you can learn how to press up and get the core strength. But what I want you to focus more on is the, the foot that's down. So in this case, what I'm showing, my left foot's gonna be down. I wanna think about lifting my down leg or my grounded leg, that hip crease up. So I'm trying to get that hip crease up and over my shoulder. One, that'll keep the hips a little more square. Two, it'll help you from going all the way over because you're not swinging that leg as far as you can. So I'm here, again, elbow underneath shoulder, elbow underneath shoulder, press into the hands, elbows wrap towards each other. I'm feeling my external rotators, walk the feet in, lift my left heel, bend my left knee, I try to keep the hips as square as possible, gentle hop up. 
And you can see my hands want to turn in, my elbows already want to turn out. So keep wrapping them towards each other. Engage my legs and I'm just going to hold it here. I'm not going to try to bring my legs closer to each other because what you see a lot of times in this is people go, I got to quickly get my feet, I got to quickly get my feet, or their knees bend, and when the knees bend, the hips move. So the more you can just find that V shape, hold it, it is a forearm balance, the more you can hold that and get comfortable, and then once you're comfortable there, slowly bring the legs together. Because what happens is when your leg is engaged, I'm engaging my quad, my calves, my toes are spread wide. It engages all the muscles along the side body and then the legs that it keeps the hips from moving. Any slight little bend, now my hip can move. So that's why I like to teach legs wide, energy out, hold that until you're really comfortable. Again, maybe you're just taking a few hops and if you're just taking a few hops, right, I wanna keep working that activation in the legs to one day be able to get the shoulders up press up, hold it here, okay? Now again, that common obstacle of elbows want to go out. We can take a block, place it at the top of your mat. We're gonna work that, remember how when we were on our forearms, we turn the palms up, we work the external rotation. We're gonna turn our palms facing up. Now, for those who haven't practiced this the first couple times, it might be a little scary to you, but Trust me when I say this, when, you're, when you find that little bit more of a hop, a little bit more momentum, you're gonna feel more stable because the shoulders are naturally externally rotated. So it allows the elbows to stay under the, the shoulders a lot more without as much effort. We use the block so we can press the hands, the, the pinky finger edge of the hands towards each other. And what this does is if you feel it, if you grab your block and you press your hands into the block, with the palms facing up, you're gonna feel the lats and the serratus, the big muscles that support you while you're up. So with this, again, I'm gonna press the block with my hands, I'm gonna to try to turn my thumbs towards the mat. The thumbs may not touch, but that's where I'm going. Press into the forearms, walk the feet in as far as I can. Again, you wanna lift the feet to come as close to the elbows so the hips get over the shoulders more. Press in so you're not you're not collapsing down, you're pressing out, wrapping thumbs down, squeezing the block. Maybe you're holding it here, or again, lift your right leg, bend your left knee, think about lifting your left hip crease up. Find your V-shape, hold it here. Do not try to bring the legs together until you're super comfortable. Now you're gonna to wanna to press into the hands, not collapse down, press in and lift out. Again, my knees bend, my hips move. If I lose any of this activation of legs, so my toes are spread to get the shins, my quads get the legs, and I'm engaging my glutes to separate. So again, until you're comfortable with the legs out, don't worry about bringing them together. It is a forearm balance. It's a V shape or an L shape, whatever shape you wanna call it. It is that of a forearm balance and you're balancing. Then once you're comfortable, you bring the legs together. What you see is people think, I gotta get my legs together, legs together, legs together. And by doing that and losing the balance, you're not finding the legs out. You're not finding the true balance in the shoulders and in the core to bring the legs up so it's gonna actually take you longer to stick your forearm balance than if you keep the legs wide. And then once you have the legs wide, you can start bringing them together. Once they're together, you can start taking all the fun little variations of it. Okay, so get on your mat. Again, think, elbows in, elbows in, elbows in, serratus lats, serratus lats, serratus lats, and then walk your feet in as far as possible. Think about lifting your standing hip crease rather than your lifted legs swinging as much as you can get it. Thanks, namaste.